God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand, when you don't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. Trust his heart. Trust his heart. Trust his heart. Trust If it seems that the world is on your shoulders While sinking beneath the hill you're trying to climb Just ask the Lord to come and be your Savior And He'll climb with you all the time Try God Try God when the way grows weary that you try Try prayer. Try prayer when the load is heavy that you bear. Let's try love. Try love. Show the world around us that we care. Let's try love. Try prayer. Try God. He set my feet on higher ground. Friend like no one. Try prayer. Try prayer when the load is heavy that you bear. Let's try love. Try love. Show the world around us that we care. Let's try love. Try prayer. Try God. Try God. Try God when the way grows weary that you try. Try prayer. Let's try love, try love, show the world around us that we care. Let's try love, try prayer, try God. Let's try love, try prayer, try God. Let's try God. Just beyond the clouds.
his clear skies. He speaks peace to the raging storm when peace could not be found. He already sees the rainbow when we see only clouds. And when the storms of life come crashing in and trouble me, Feel God's arms around me, and He whispers, Let it be, let it be. God sees the storm from the other side, He knows the lessons learned, and just beyond the clouds, He sees clear sky. Dying, oh what rejoice! 
wonderful country. We've told the land of sin we're through, going to a new home. Up yonder, God's word is the map, and we treasure it fondly. We travel this great caravan, keeps on rolling along. We're happy we are traveling o'er the trail that is winding. It's winding over mountains and through the valleys below. Oh, to heaven, bubbling springs of pure living water we're finding. To strengthen this great caravan keeps on rolling along. There are many trails going other directions to danger, but our Savior guide knows the one that leads home to heaven. We are following, never voicing objection. We're going, this great caravan keeps on rolling along. We're happy we are traveling o'er the trail that is winding. It's winding over mountains and through the valleys below. Keeps on rolling along. Dangers all along lurking in the dark shadows. Around us we will never fear. Christ is always alone. Protecting, he will never refuse to captain our battles. With us while this caravan keeps on rolling along. We're happy we are traveling o'er the trail that is winding. It's winding over mountains and through the valleys below. To heaven, bubbling springs of pure living water. We're caravan keeps on rolling along. We're happy we are traveling o'er the trail that is winding. It's winding over mountains and through the valleys below. To heaven, bubbling springs of pure living water we're finding. Keeps on rolling along. This great caravan keeps on rolling along. This old world is filled with disappointments and trouble. And I almost lose my way Then I remember I'm just a pilgrim In this troubled world below That's one thought that keeps me singing as I go We're not home yet, children So keep your eyes open Savior, just a few more days to labor, and we'll sit down beside the river. How we long 
to be with Jesus and our loved ones gone before us. There's a better day of coming. We're not home yet. There's a land filled with milk and honey just waiting for me. Someday Jesus will come and take me over the sea. So I'll just keep watching and waiting in this troubled world below. That's one thought that keeps me singing as I go. That's the place my soul. 
Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Our kind Heavenly Father, we pause before you this morning. Father, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you this morning that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for each that is here. Lord, it's our desire today that we would worship you. We would praise you for your goodness. And Lord, it's our desire that when we go through valleys that we would lean upon you. Father, be close to us. May your comfort and your love be with Mary and the family. Guide this service, bless it according to your will. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. On behalf of the family, I would like to welcome you to the funeral service of Clyde Stahl. We appreciate your presence and your support. Hebrews 9, 27 says, as, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. You know, this morning we're here for a divine appointment that you and I did not schedule. We did not choose the day or the hour to be here. And God doesn't want us to choose that. He doesn't want us to choose the appointment time and place. We are asked to leave that in his hands. The only thing our Father in heaven asks us to do is to be prepared for this divine appointment. May, we, may this service today help us be more prepared for that divine appointment for each one of us. If you have your program with you, it has the order of the service. I'll go over the order of the service. After I'm finished, we'll have two congregational songs by Brother Lauren Kaufman. Following that will be a devotional by Dave Whitmer. After that, we'll have the message by Gerald Wagler. Following the message will be two recorded songs, I believe, that Clyde had actually requested before he died. Right after these two songs will be the reading of the obituary. And after that, there will be a poem uh, or a reading by one of the family members. And after which, we'll give attention back to the ushers and the funeral directors for the re remainder of the final viewing. So at this time, we would like to allow Brother Lauren to lead us in two songs. <coughs> We'll begin with the familiar hymn, Blessed Assurance. The words are supposed to be up there for you. You probably know this one by heart. Clyde enjoyed singing and music, so let's celebrate his life uh, with these songs. Uh, he also put an emphasis on the peace and the assurance that we have uh, in Christ Jesus because of Christ, and so that's one of the reasons why we chose uh, this song, Blessed Assurance. <clears throat> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fall.
and face to face. Glenda and I were talking the other night about you know, what heaven is like and what it might be like for dad now. And how limited we are in our understanding of heaven. It's just, it's, yeah, it's very human. We, we, sorry, I wasn't going to do this. <clears throat> we talk about being there with people who have gone before, wanting to spend time with them, wanting to know them. You know, I, would, I, I sure hope that I recognize and can hang out with my mom when I get there. Uh, and that's, that's how we look at it, because we're, we're, we're limited uh, in, in, in humanness. And I, I believe all those things will be. I, uh, that's, that's the way we understand it. That's, a, that's the way our children understand it. I think our children have more, more faith in, in, in all of it than, than maybe we do. They understand that Grandpa's in heaven, Grandpa's in a good place, Grandpa's fine. But... One of the things that we talked about, too, was, and and this song talks about how we will be with Jesus Christ. And we won't be limited by our human understanding and our humanness, but that veil will be taken away and we will see and understand Christ and salvation. And all of that in, in all of its fabulous glory. And, and that's yeah, one thing we don't understand yet. We don't know what it'll be like. But this song brings that out. The copy that you have on the overhead only has three verses. There are four verses in here. And I would like to read the verse that's not uh, on your copy. We will not sing it. Uh, But it's a good verse, uh, and so I'm going to read that. One of the verses goes, What rejoicing in his presence, when our banished grief and pain, when the crooked ways are straightened, and the dark things shall be plain. Sing face to face.
Greetings in our Savior's name. What a solemn occasion. What a solemn occasion. A box. A body. But no soul. A box, a body, and no soul. What happened? What happened? Genesis 2, verse 7 says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. For 71 years, this body and this soul of Clyde Stahl were bound together. Today, they're not together. It's almost like a mystery. Man couldn't divide it. But it was our creator in heaven. If you have your Bibles with you, you can turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I'd like to... Uh, use that passage this morning. I think it's on the overhead. I can't see, but yeah. Uh, <clears throat> While you're turning to there, just a few thoughts. Clyde was ordained a minister in 1988, 34 years ago. <clears throat> he faithfully served as a minister here for 34 years. <clears throat> Gerald, Kevin, and I, with Clyde, served <clears throat> on the leadership team here for 14 years. <clears throat> this makes this time very touching. <clears throat> Clyde was older than we were. Derek has been on the team for the past three years. <clears throat> Clyde's <clears throat> last message was on October the 3rd, <clears throat> 2021. He preached our communion message. <clears throat> he was diagnosed with cancer approximately one year ago. His last message before the communion message on, was on January the 3rd of 2021, before he started his treatments. That message was on identity. Who do we identify with? <clears throat> I 
on our job, the people we ad identify with, what kind of vehicles do we drive, really who do we identify with? Identity was the title of his message. His last devotional was November the 21st of 2021 here at in our church. Verses taken from Revelation 4 and 5. Honoring the God of heaven. So this morning as we go through this service in remembrance of Clyde, I'm sure this morning he would tell us to do something else, not just in honor of him, but honor God. Ecclesiastes verse, uh, chapter 12 and verse 1 re, it, it begins this way, and it caught my attention, and this is what it's, what's been on my mind for the past two or three days. Remember, remember, remember now thy Creator. And that's where I would, I would like to draw your thoughts to this morning. I'll read the first seven verses of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Remember now the Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened. And the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sounds of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and the fears shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and the desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, and the golden bow be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, and the wheel be broken at the cistern, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. As we read these verses, he's, he's saying here, remember the Creator in the days of thy youth. And you know, I, I used to think, uh, this is talking about young people. And it is. But it's, it, it's talking about uh, my age group. I'm still youth. Remember the Creator while the evil days come not. There's times, and there, there could be people sitting here today that uh, they, they don't feel like singing. Their voices have left them. It could be that you have teeth that you can't grind your, your food to digest it. It mentions that in here. It could be that your eyes are getting dim and you can't really see to read. So we need to remember the Creator in the, in, in, the, in the days of our youth before the evil days come. It's talking about days when, when those kind of things are coming into our lives. And you know, we saw that just a few weeks ago before our last funeral. Two people... Simon and Liddy laying in bed. They didn't feel like singing. They couldn't sing. 
The evil days had already come. So remember the Creator while you're able. Remember the Creator in the days of your youth. When? When? When should we remember the Creator? I said the days of the youth, but it's what's the second word? Remember now. Now. Now is the day of salvation. Remember Him. Remember the Creator. You're not your own. You have no right to yourselves. You are not your own. It was a Creator that put you here on earth to glorify Him. Are you glorifying the Creator? Remember the Creator. He created you. He preserves you. He feeds, feeds you. He clothes you. He upholds you. Remember Him. He does all that. He feeds you. He upholds you. He is giving you clothing. And when you were undone and in your sins, He died for you. He wants to redeem you. Remember the Creator. <clears throat> Remember now the Creator in the days of thy youth. You have no certainty of life. Now is yours. Today is yours. Tomorrow may not be. Today's your day. Tuesday afternoon was a good visit with Brother Clyde. He said he felt better than he had in a year. <clears throat> I went away thinking that he had some time left here on earth, and he did have. Thursday afternoon, it, well, it wasn't the same. I went in, in to, his, to the house, he said, pull up your chair. Right against his chair, his voice was to a whisper, or just above a whisper. Things had changed. Clyde said, things have changed. I don't know what's going on. Nobody knows. But the Creator did. It was still in Clyde's hands to make choices that day. Thursday. Who would have thought that Friday morning life would flee? We never know. We think we're going out to the burial site. We don't know. This moment is yours, but the next moment may not be yours. Remember the Creator. It's in His hands. Seventy-one years ago, He was there when Clyde was born. He gave him the breath of life. At 8.15, Friday morning, he took that breath of life. We don't have to be 71. 
Sometimes old people, older people linger and linger. We wonder why God is having them here on the earth. But then, at the twinkling of an eye or the snap of a finger, someone else is snatched out of this life. That's our creator. So this morning, remember your creator. Do it quickly. Remember him now. Verse 6. talks about the silver cord. The silver cord. The writer is referring to here what I mentioned earlier. When Clyde was born, the body and the soul were united. There was a cord that held them together. It was like two friends. The body and soul were always together for 71 years. But quickly, that cord was broken. It was unknotted, or however you might say. And the body is here. But the soul has one went back to God who gave it. Six men We're appointed here this morning to take care of this body. And put it back to the earth where it came from. If you could ask those six men, who's going to take care of the soul? It's already been taken care of. That soul has went back to God. There, ain't, there is not a soul, not, not a man here, not a woman, no one here can take care of that soul. Today we can make preparations for that great day when the Lord will return. But we can't take care of the soul after the body dies. As the tree falls, so shall it lie. This morning, remember the Creator in the days of thy youth. As I, I, as I stood here and this morning again, you just you, you look at that body, and I think it's, it's well that we do that. Put yourself in the box this morning. Each one of you, put yourself in the box. How is your soul? Where will your soul be in eternity? Where will your soul be in eternity? You're determining that today it's in your hand, but when the tree falls, it'll be just right where it's at. If you're living for Jesus Christ, you can go to heaven, but if you're living for yourself and you're doing your own things, you're going to hell. Remember, remember, remember the Creator in the days of your youth. I stand here and I look at that body and I wonder, uh, could I just see any movement yet? It's hard to see a loved one go. There's not no movement there. The body has died, but the soul is still living and it's somewhere in eternity. Remember, remember, Remember the Creator in the days of thy youth. May the Lord bless each one of you this morning as we go through this service. Greetings and blessings in the name of Jesus. To all of you family, extended family, friends of the family, relatives. Our church family, 
those of you fellow ministers from the community and elsewhere, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us and the family during this time of our loss. Thank you for coming to, share, to show respect for Brother Clyde and the life he lived. Revelation 14, 13, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. I have confidence Clyde died in the Lord. This verse says, those who die in the Lord are blessed. Isn't that comforting? He's experiencing blessing. As I started my sermon notes, I needed a file name, and practically without thinking, I just typed Clyde's funeral sermon. And I stared at that a little bit, and I thought, am I really doing this? This is Clyde. This is my friend. This is a person I've spent hours with, a person that listened to me when I had troubles, a person that helped me in my spiritual life as a young person. I can remember Clyde having summer Bible school, must have been the moderator way back, and he read the story Henry's Red Sea to all of us children. I don't know why those kinds of things stick, but I still remember it. It was a fascinating story, still is. Remember how he taught us about William Tyndale and John Wycliffe and how they translated the Bible at great risk of their lives. That made such an impact on me. Clyde preached about theology. He loved salvation. He loved to, to explain it the best he could. I think it was so important to him because he, he worked through those things in his own life, and then he just longed to help other people understand how to know the Lord. He was so involved in school and loved the Christian school. Uh, the years I was teaching, uh, just a, a very young man, and uh, such an encouragement and I remember particularly one day he visited the classroom, and afterward he just, just encouraged me. Uh, I felt such a lift, such, such support to just keep doing this. Clyde and I had a lot of similar interest, so when we would read, if I would read something, then I would want to talk about it with him. If he'd read something, he'd want to talk about it with me. And just a day or two ago, I asked my wife, who am I going to call now? And I have other friends, and I thank God for that. But Clyde had a had kind of, there were those certain things I read or heard about that I always wanted to talk to Clyde about. I watched Clyde grow and change as he grew older. Clyde wasn't perfect, and he would be the first one to tell us that. But I just saw him mature and become more Christ-like as he aged. And that gives me a lot of hope. God works on us and keeps working on us every day of our lives. I've never quite had this privilege that I had Thursday night. You had to get up real close. Clyde's mind was perfectly clear. We visited. It seemed like old times. And he was giving instructions on what he would like preached at the funeral. I expect you're seeing it on the overhead. He asked for that to be written up there. And he wanted to emphasize the concept of being at peace with God. Romans 5.1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we are at peace with God, 
God then rewards us with His peace. Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And I would like to add one more verse that Clyde didn't request, Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And most people who know a little about Hebrew, and I don't, say that shalom is, is probably a much broader word than we think about with peace, our English word peace. Shalom involves a state of harmony and wholeness, a harmonious state of soul and mind. It is when all of life is at rest, at peace. This is the shalom of God that we're talking about. It's when our lives are holy at rest with Almighty God, our Creator. When we walk in the presence of God without fear, but rather with joy, because it's all good with the Lord. This is true freedom. And I think that was what Clyde wanted to convey today. God has made it possible that all of us can experience that. Shalom first existed perfectly, at least on earth, in the Garden of Eden. There's evidence of that in Genesis 1 verse 31, and God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Everything was good in the Garden of Eden. There was perfect shalom. Adam and Eve were created and placed there, and it says of them in Genesis 2, the last verse, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And that's symbolic of the openness and clarity they had with each other and with their Creator. Everything was open, in the wide open. There was nothing hidden. That is shalom. Peace. Shalom was lost in the garden. We know the story. Genesis 3, the serpent tempted Eve. Eve ate of the forbidden fruit. She gave her husband of the fruit. He must have been standing right there. And the sad story continues this way in verse 7 of Genesis 3. And the eyes of them both were opened, <clears throat> and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And so suddenly the relationship that was all in the clear, everything in the wide open, now has hidden, hidden parts, has parts that we don't want anyone to see. And more importantly, parts that we don't want God to see. There's a message of hope in that passage, numerous messages. But God came walking in the garden. That's an indication of the fellowship that was there. God came walking and He said, where are you? And you see, God created us. It is, it is us who have walked away, but God comes looking for us. He wants to reestablish the peace that existed in Eden. He wants us to be at one with Him. He wants us to be at one with each other. Just that clarity where all is well. I invite you to turn, if you have Bibles, to Romans 3. The verse that Clyde chose is Romans 5, 1. 
And if you noticed, it begins with the word therefore, and so there you have uh, numerous things uh, just previously in Romans 3 and 4 that um, give us the backdrop of the therefore in chapter 5. So we'd like to just take a, a just look a, a few minutes at some verses in Romans 3 that so clearly describe our problem. Romans 3, I'd like to begin reading in verse 9 and read to verse 18. Romans 3, verse 9, what then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. This is describing sinful man. It's describing us. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their way. In the way of, do you see this? The way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And drop down to verse 23 yet. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We heard the emphasis over and over that it's all of us. In verse 9 and 10, it says, all of us have sinned. None are righteous. None. Verse 11 and 12 talk about our understanding. That's referring to our minds. We have darkened minds. We don't think straight when we're living for the flesh. We think selfishly. We aren't seeking after God. We've all gone out of the way and for purposes of building up the kingdom, of doing work that God has created us for, the writer here in Romans tells us plainly and bluntly, we're no good. We're unprofitable. We aren't doing the things God made us to do. It's a loss to God. Thirteen and fourteen are just really graphic. Their throat is an open sepulcher, their tongues deceitful. We get the, the, the picture here of just filth, uh, smelly filth coming out of a person and out of our mouths, deceitful, telling lies, can't trust people that are walking in the flesh. The poison of asp is under their lips. Poison pours forth out of the ungodly mouths, full of cursing and bitterness. And 15 and 16, just, just running wild after sin. And, and everything that we do is tainted with ugliness, misery. That's the way of the ungodly. And there's no peace when we're in that state. No peace. I'd like to move on now to verses 24 and 25 of Romans 3 and show us the answer. How do we find peace with God? Romans 3.24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Well, we are justified by His grace. Justification is a big word that essentially means to be made righteous. And so, you have the same concept that Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, 
where he said, you must be born again. You must become a new person. Remember, earlier in the chapter, we were told none of us are righteous. In fact, we're very unrighteous. And so, to have peace with God and to walk with God, we need to be made righteous. And only by God's miraculous power, by His grace, can that happen. And we must cry out to Him and ask Him to change us. Through the redemption, there are so many aspects of what the Lord has done for us, and they're all beautiful. Redemption is the thought of being delivered from captivity, and we know so much about that, or we've, our minds have been there because of what was happening in Haiti, and so we understand redeeming and, and needing to be delivered from captors. Outside of the Lord, we are in captivity to the devil. We're in captivity to our flesh. And this, this thought of redemption takes us back to Passover. And when the Israelites were delivered from Egypt, they were taken out by God's mighty arm. Uh, we are reminded many times in the Scriptures Nine-year-old David returned from Sunday school. His mother asked him what he had learned. Here's the tale he told her. Well, the teacher told how God sent Moses behind the enemy lines to rescue the Israelites from the Egyptians. When they came to the Red Sea, Moses called for the engineers to build a pontoon bridge. After they had all crossed, they looked back and saw the Egyptian tanks were coming. Quick as a flash, Moses radioed headquarters on his walkie-talkie to send in the bombers to destroy the bridge, and that's how he saved the Israelites. His mother was astonished and said, David, is that really what your teacher taught you? Well, not exactly, Mom, but if I told it his way, You'd never believe it. What's the point? All of us, at some time or another, face an issue in our lives that we don't think the Lord can handle. We find ourselves in some kind of bondage or in some kind of situation that we are certain the Lord can't deliver us from this one. And we forget God delivered Israel with a mighty arm. It was a miraculous deliverance. The young boy said, if you hear it the Bible way, you wouldn't believe it. But it's true. God did it for Israel, and He will do it for all those who come to Him in faith. Verse 25 has the word propitiation. God has set forth Jesus to be our propitiation through faith in His blood. Propitiation is, again, kind of a big word, but it's a word that means how God deals with our sin, how God gets rid of sin. How is it efficacious to us? How will it help us if we have faith in His blood? His blood covers, the Bible says in some ways, in some places, and in John, in 1 John says His blood cleanses. And so both are metaphors just to show us that it takes it away. It can't be seen anymore. Propitiation through faith in His blood. Believing that Jesus can do it for me. And we're just going to go back to 5 verse 1. Therefore, 
And and chapter 4 of Romans is an interesting study. It's a lot about how Abraham found God and how God made him righteous. Chapter 5, verse 1, therefore, in light of this beautiful gift of God, being justified, being made righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Most of the sacrifices that the Israelites needed to make had to do with their sins and their failures. There is one offering that stands out a bit. And in, in, with the exception of one, when you offered, made an offering, you, you didn't eat any of the meat. But there is one exception, and that is the peace offering. If we would turn to Leviticus 7, and we're not going to, there it describes how you went about making a peace offering. And it seems that you came to make a peace offering not because you had to, but you came because your heart was overflowing with thankfulness. Maybe a prayer had been answered, like is in the case with Hannah. Perhaps you had made a vow that you would praise the Lord in a certain way if He did something for you, and He did. And now you're here bringing your offering. And there were various kinds of bread that you offered. And then there was the sacrifice. And it was roasted there in the temple. And parts of it were burned up completely, some of the innards. But then you took it home. And it appears as though you could invite others to participate in your joyful offering that you had made. Everyone needed to be ceremonially clean, and together you would rejoice in the goodness of God and eat this meat. Remember Clyde wanted to emphasize that when we are at peace with God, He blesses us then with the peace of God. And when we're experiencing that, our heart, we're, we're ready. Remember, remember it said we're unprofitable in our old state? But now, when, we're, when all is clear, when we're walking in the garden again and the Lord comes and we don't hide, we're just ready to walk in His presence, then we're ready to do His will. We're ready to go, whatever you want, Lord, here I am. Everything's clear. I'm ready to go. And our hearts are full of rejoicing. We, we have need to sing. Uh, not because we have to, but just because it's bubbling out of the joy of peace that's there. And then as life comes to its close, we meet the Lord with peace. Clyde was lying in the hospital bed a few weeks ago. Most of us who saw him thought he would pass away, and I think he thought so too. He said, it's not scary. And I just, I just saw this as he was approaching death, and he knew it was close. He didn't fight it. He didn't resist it. it <laughs> I don't know if I, if I got it right, but it felt to me like it, it was just the next job that he needed to do. And I got there the other night, and I think he, you know, we had to, to he wanted me to come again and, and give me these final instructions. He said, you know, um, I think he was almost being humorous. He said, it, it's just never quite convenient to die, is it? But he, he, there was such a peace there. 
And, and we got, I got real close, and, and we just visited, and he told me all these things. And then, then I just asked him, Clyde, is, is it all well? Is there anything you would want to share? Is there, is, are you at peace? And he, he just shared that the devil still tempts him, but it's, it's all good. It's all well. What a way to say goodbye. Everything's at peace. We have such hope. God would want to give us that gift. Please avail yourself to it. He could deliver the Israelites in the most impossible situation, and He can deliver every one of us if we reach out to Him in faith. Let's just bow our heads for prayer. Lord, we come to You in gratitude for Your goodness. Thank you for redemption. Thank you that you redeemed our dear brother Clyde. And Lord, thank you for the many years that his family has had and all of us as a church family have had with him. Thank you for the years of service that he gave so unselfishly. Lord, thank you for the example of living before you in that open and honest way always striving to be at peace with you and help us, Lord, to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Somewhere in Jesus, 
When we kneel down at his feet, friends and loved ones we will meet, then we'll be glad, then we'll be glad we live for him. Then we'll be glad, then we'll be glad we live for Jesus. One and last day, one and last day of perfect joy. Then we'll be glad, then we'll be glad we live for Jesus. Singing and shouting, praising his name. Standing in his presence will never be the same. Then we'll be glad, then we'll be glad we live for him. Then we'll be glad, then we'll be glad we live for Jesus. One endless day, one endless day of perfect joy. Then we'll be glad, then we'll be glad we live for Jesus. Singing and shouting, praising his name. Standing in his presence will never be the same. Then we'll be glad, then we'll be glad we live for him. Sorry. Those songs are one of my favorites as well. Won't we be glad when we serve the Lord? <clears throat> Friday when Clyde passed away, I was with the family and I believe it was mentioned this morning about dying in the Lord. I just reflected and thought of what a blessing it is to die in the Lord. We're never ready for partings. But dying in the Lord is much more precious than one more day on earth together. Even several years if you want to. It is priceless. It is beyond measure when we can die in the Lord. I'd like to read the obituary at this time. It's on the back of your program. <clears throat> Clyde Stahl, 71 years, nine months of Odin, Indiana, entered into eternal rest on Friday, February 25th at 8.15 a.m. at his resi residence with his wife by his side. He, he had battled cancer for a year. He was born May 25, 1950, to the late Enos and Dorothy Stahl. Stahl. He married Mary Koblenz on December 12, 1970. Surviving are his wife, two sons, and two daughters, Conrad Sharon Stahl, Arlen Stahl, Glenda Lauren Kaufman, and Miriam Aiden Nepp, all of Odin, Indiana. Grandchildren, Malachi, Grace, Olivia, Quentin, Janet, Emma and Edwin Nepp, Renaya and Carter Stahl, Elise Kaufman, siblings Owen Marie Stahl, Daryl Stahl, Richard Ruth Ann Stahl, Dwight Stahl, Diane Gary Wagler, Rose Omer Miller, Linda Daryl Wagler, Ruth Stahl, Sharon Stahl, Sandy Jason Bainbridge, and Leonard Lana Stahl. He was preceded in death by his parents. A stillborn son, brother, Ernest, 
sister-in-law Naomi Waglerstall, and granddaughter Aaliyah Maria Curtis. I'd also like to read the thank you at the bottom as well. Thank you, this is from the family. Thank you to our friends and family for all your thoughtfulness shown to us over the last year during Clyde's cancer journey. And also a special thank you to the staff at Lahona Cancer Center for the excellent care he received. At this time, I believe Lauren Kaufman will have a reading or so. Just a few of my own memories before I read uh, what Shannon, uh, Clyde's niece, Shannon Hosteller, put together in the last, I don't know how long she was working on it, and other people gave her insight and ideas for it. So uh, I was talking to Dad Thursday evening. He was talking to us, and I said, you didn't much like me when I first, no, I said, I didn't much like you when I first came. Uh, and he said, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I came at a time when, when Clyde was looking forward to having a, a granddaughter in the apartment again, uh, and it was hard for him to, to see his daughter fall so completely uh, for this Pennsylvanian. Uh, and so we had some yeah, interesting times. Those of you that know me know that my mouth gets me in trouble lots. Uh, I don't think before I talk nearly enough. Uh, and so, and you know, I wasn't used to a man that, you know, sat there in silence. You know, you ask him a question and he didn't, he just didn't say anything. Three days later, he answered the question, you know, and I was just thinking now he would have been, he would have been right at home with Job's friends who sat there for seven days without saying a thing, you know. Uh, so yeah, we had some interesting times and it, it took me a while uh, to get to the point where I looked forward to going to mom and dad to visit. Linda would say, you know, shall we go to mom and dad? I'd say, oh, yeah, sure. But inside I was like, no, I don't, I don't much feel like it's night. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that that has all changed. Uh, and I uh, so enjoyed my, my times with Clyde and with Mary. Uh, and we've come, we came to an understanding uh, and... Uh, saw each other uh, differently, and I'm, I'm glad for that. I'm so grateful for that. We spent a lot of times, a lot of visits in the last year, uh, just being there uh, and enjoying them. This is the reading uh, by Shannon. <clears throat> Clyde was born the first of 13 and was gifted with leadership abilities stemming back to his childhood. He was often the leader of the pack when the six boys were on another adventure, whether it was hunting and skinning coons, climbing up a roof for a tree, or helping their dad move hogs. Clyde, as the oldest, was the first to venture out before his youngest brother, Leonard, was born. Clyde set off for the hills of Virginia to serve at Faith Mission Home. There he met his bride, Mary, and brought her back to Indiana to raise his family. Early mornings and late afternoons, Cows and milking would call his name. He spent many hours in the barn scraping, cleaning, or fixing. He mauled the deep things of life and God and sketched many a sermon while scrubbing udders, hanging milkers. Children would stick their heads in the windows, and he would look up and say, Boo! His nieces and nephews would come in to help, and he would patiently show them what to do. Cold mornings in the steamy milking parlors created deep conversations and questions when his children would say, Daddy, what do you think about this? Summer afternoons, when it was hot and humid, his brother Ern would call and say, I was thinking we might have a cabin party tonight. That meant cheers from the children, and when the milking was done, they loaded up food and family and headed to join the rest of the clan at the cabin. They bounced back the dirt lane, pulled out the hot dogs, homemade ice cream, and enjoyed an evening together. There were boat rides for the children, conversations with laughter for the adults, and when the mosquitoes started biting and the bullfrogs began to croak, Clyde would say, Come on, time to go and they all piled in and headed for home. A good evening with the family was never wasted time. Clyde had a heart for children, and fostering was nestled deep in his soul. He loved on, he loved on the little ones and brought healing to the hurting, showing them Jesus through his actions. He opened his heart and home to many that needed a place to be loved. And When life, life and circumstances 
would move them on, he felt the loss of each one deeply. Clyde loved reading and learning. He kicked back in his recliner many evenings, ingesting the words of another book from his ever-abounding stack. He loved singing and listening to music. He was always happy to sit and drink in the notes of a good choir. Conversations with his brother Owen were also nearly a daily occurrence. They covered many topics in a manner understood by only brothers as close as they. Working with wood was a hobby Clyde enjoyed and pursued. He spent many hours in his shop, planing, sanding, crafting, creating another piece of furniture. His worn hands ran over the smooth wood, and he felt the silky varnish when it had dried. Many people benefited from his skills. His children and grandchildren were often given useful pieces, much to their delight. Rarely did he require payment. Instead, he used his talent and gift and, and gave it away with love. Throughout life, Clyde faced a lot of loss. Each time a child would leave his home, they took a piece of his heart along. He grieved the passing of both of his parents, his brother Ern. A few years later, grief visited yet again, and he was heartbroken over the death of his granddaughter, Aaliyah. The sorrow weighed heavy on him, and new creases lined his eyes as he walked with his daughter through the heaviness of this journey. In the fall of the same year, his nephew Tristan was gone in the blink of an eye. Clyde had a sudden, I had a seldom heard, dry and quiet laugh, and you were also often left wondering just what was he thinking behind his brown eyes. On occasion, you would see a grin from him, but those were rare and hard to come by. He was a second dad to me, always around when I was growing up, always ready to listen when we had questions. I spent many meals around his table, and while we chattered loudly, he listened quietly with an occasional chuckle. He pulled when I wanted to push, and even though I thought he was unbelievably stubborn, in the end he was usually right. He had quiet words of wisdom for life's hard moments, or sometimes he would just stand with you in silence. His presence alone was enough. His character and life portrayed his deep and intimate love for Jesus. His Bible was always found close by, and hours were spent in his study pouring over the Word of God. He quietly spoke truth into many lives, nurturing, walking alongside, and shepherding those he cared for. He lived a life well-lived, full of love, laughter, family, and hard work, always with a song on his lip. Through his final, though his final year was not easy, he leaned heavily on his Jesus for strength and faced what God allowed with courage. While the thought of crossing Jordan tugged on his heart, seeing Jesus meant leaving loved ones behind. To the very end, he remained faithful and could say with Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. There is now la laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And as I walk out the door for the last time with a wave of his hand, he said to me, take care. Thank you, Shannon. I trust that's all our desires is to do as those mentioned. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. A few announcements here. The burial will be at the Mount Olive Cemetery. Most of you know where that's at. It's at the north end of the church, over here to your west and north. Everyone is welcome to attend. Just a note, um, God has blessed us with much rain lately, so we would advise you to go out in the parking lot on the west side of the church to the cemetery and, and try to avoid coming on the east side of the church as there's mud and potential for yeah muddy feet coming that way. So please try to stay on the west side as you go to and from the burial site. Also at the graveside service, um, there will be a group of people kind of leading out and singing, and I believe the family would enjoy if everyone then would help sing that's out there. Um, so yeah, everyone is welcome to help sing at the graveyard's service. Also, there is a noon meal prepared 
and everyone is welcome to enjoy the meal and the fellowship here. Those who don't go to the cemetery can stay and, and enjoy the meal uh, right away. We'll have prayer here in a minute, and then after prayer, uh, we'll turn our time over to those in charge, and then we'll have the final viewing. So maybe at this time, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come before you at this time, Father. Father, we heard many words of admonition, encouragement, to walk in your ways, to be found faithful, Lord, to die in the Lord, and to find that peace of God which passeth all understanding, Father. Lord, we just, again, ask for your presence, pray for strength as the family um, proceeds to the burial site, Father. We just pray for grace and strength for the family, for Mary. Lord, we just, yeah, we need you and we desire your presence. We also pray, Father, and thank you for the noon meal. We pray that you bless it to our bodies. Help us use the strength we gain from it to honor you. And may the fellowship afterwards bring glory to you. May it also bring, be upbuilding to one another, Father. Lord, we thank you for Clyde again, for the testimony he has been to us. Encouragement to walk in your ways, Father. And help us to do so, to be found faithful to the end, Father. We give this and the render this day to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll turn the time over to the cemetery directors.